Hey, teacher, how are you? Hello, good evening. How are you? Welcome to the class. Thank you, teacher. Perfect. So we're going to wait for the rest of the people to come and then we're going to move on. Okay, okay. Great. No The last Friday, uh, it was in no no, no work class, yeah. No, no, there was no class because it was vacation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to finish. I remember it was going to be October tenth, but then it's going to be October eleventh. Okay. Perfect. Good. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. We're going to start. And uh, well, of course, you know that on Friday, we didn't have any class because it was a holiday. So we're going to move the class one more day at the end of the class, I mean. Um, I hope you had a very nice vacation and you rest very well. I hope you did many things and rest and I hope you're ready as well for the class of today. So. We are going to start and um, as usual, we are going to check about the platform, okay? So that is the video conference number nine. And this is the class of today. And here is the question for today. And also remember to do the homework 2.5. That is uh, the one for us right now. And here is going to be the, remember that whenever we do this, Whenever we type, we need to be careful about the periods, the spaces, and many other things. If by any chance you find any errors, let me know so I can, uh, can report those. And well, this has two parts, okay? First one is for you to type, and the other one is for you to come and take the option that is the best option for you. Okay, so we are going to check the attendance, of course. So, Ada Susena Cáceres Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. 
Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Blanc Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. She's coming. Okay, perfect. So we are going to start then. So present teacher. I'm sorry, but my computer got a little lower. Okay, no worries. I'm going to check it out. Okay. And uh, well, we were discussing about so many uh, conflicts about culture and things and that multicultural and ethnicity and things and that. So we're going to start today uh, the class with a video. So as usual, we're going to check the video and then just uh, we are going to comment or provide opinions about this. So here we go. I'm going to show. Okay, here we go. In this video, we're going to discuss the definition of conflict and then talk about some of the reasons why conflict happens within our relationships. It's important to note that a lot of what we're learning about today is true of not just intercultural relationships, but of all relationships that we're a part of. So this information is not only valuable to understanding your intercultural relationships, but technically any relationship that you're a part of. Conflict is the perceived or real incompatibility of goals, values, expectations, processes, or outcomes between two or more interdependent individuals or groups. So within that definition, it's important to remember that interdependent individuals or interdependent groups are um, groups of people or individuals who rely on one another to get things done. So remember that definition from early in the semester. Um, we also want to remember that in order for conflict to happen, it doesn't actually have to be um, evident to both individuals who are in conflict or to both groups who are in conflict. So conflict simply has to be perceived by one of those individuals. So again, that means sometimes we might not recognize that within our relationships we're in conflict situations, but so long as one person perceives there to be a conflict, that conflict technically exists. Also, it's important to note that there are many reasons why conflict can come about. So as individuals, we all have different cultural backgrounds, and thus we likely have different values than the people that we interact with. Our values, as we've learned this semester, are tied to the social and political structures that help us understand how um, individuals in our culture ought to behave. So there's social and there's political rules concerning how people within a culture um, should interact with one another um, or how they should do things. So all conflict really needs to be understood within the context of the culture in which that conflict is happening or the culture in which the individuals in the conflict come from. So our gender, sexual, racial, ethnic, religious identities, just to name a few of the many different identities that we can have, are all going to affect the way that we look at conflict situations. So our cultural backgrounds then are intrinsically tied to the different conflicts that we experience. So we can't really understand a conflict without understanding the cultures of the individuals involved in that conflict. There are different types of conflict that you ought to be aware of. First, interpersonal conflict is conflict between two or more people who have some type of relationship with one another. So when individuals in an organization start fighting within their work group, that's considered interpersonal conflict. Political conflict is conflict that occurs on a societal level. So protests or conflicts that center on Obamacare are considered political conflicts. 
international conflict is conflict between different nations or different international groups. So the terrorist attacks on 9-11 would be considered international conflict, even though technically Al-Qaeda isn't tied to a particular nation. It is important to remember that um, groups from overseas would also cons be considered international conflict rather than domestic conflict, which would be conflict that occurs um, within our country. So why does intercultural conflict happen? It's important to consider this question because if we want to maintain our intercultural relationships, we have to consider the fact that conflict is a part of life and is going to happen in any relationship that we're a part of. Thus, part of maintaining our relationships is understanding how we can resolve the conflicts that will inevitably happen. If we're going to resolve conflicts, however, we have to know why those conflicts are occurring. Sometimes intercultural conflict happens when people have feelings that are incompatible. So Lucy likes Schroeder, but Schroeder doesn't share the same feelings for Lucy. When we have a conflict arising because of these incompatible feelings or unreciprocated feelings, we are said to have affective conflict. Sometimes intercultural conflict happens when people disagree about what the best course of action might be. So people here might agree about where the end point of a situation ought to be so they know where they want to end up, but they have differing ideas about how to get there. So we see one group wants to go over the wall, one group wants to go under the wall, and one group wants to go through the wall. When we experience a conflict like this, we're experiencing a conflict of interest. Intercultural conflict that occurs because people have different ideologies is called a value conflict. So if the couple in the photo fought over what their marriage so ceremony would look like, they would be having a value conflict. Um, they both have different religious ideologies, and we can tell that because in the photo there's two different officiates at the wedding. So they had to make a decision about what their ceremony would look like. How would they make their marriage ceremony their own? So if they fought about what that would look like, again, that would be a value conflict. Intercultural conflict also occurs because people perceive the world differently. As we've learned this semester, sometimes our cultural backgrounds enable us to see the same thing from completely different vantage points. So what looks like four to one individual might look like three to the other. And when we have conflicts of this nature, they're called cognitive conflicts. Finally, intercultural conflict happens when people have different ideas about which outcome is the most desirable. So for our honeymoon, I wanted to go to Hawaii and my husband wanted to go to Alaska. We were experiencing goal conflict because we each had a different idea about where we wanted to end up. We went to Alaska. As we examine intercultural conflict and try to understand why it's happening, we have to consider the reasons why conflict occurs as well as the context in which that conflict occurs. So relationships can be confusing at times because conflict is so contextual. What is acceptable for a relational partner in one context might not be in another context. So depending on the context, the same behaviors can either be acceptable or unacceptable. Likewise, the social context matters. So while polygamy might be acceptable to the individuals in TLC's sister wives, society doesn't see it as acceptable and at times the Brown family has felt social pressures to move to new communities because their ideologies aren't acceptable to the other members of that neighborhood. So that's a value conflict that's occurring at the societal rather than a relational level. So there's lots of reasons why conflict can happen in intercultural relationships. Um, even when people share cultural ideas, there is always the potential for conflict. So you can imagine how coming from different cultural backgrounds might make intercultural relationships more prone to conflict than relationships um, between individuals who share more cultural ideologies. Okay, so any opinions, any comments about this, this video? Wow, I never listed how many conflicts there were in around the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots My of God. them. I was taking notes and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess like 10, I took notes about 10. But one thing to, uh, brought my attention is uh, she was saying that depending on the conflict, the behavior can be accepted or not. And I was, hmm. Hmm. Well, makes sense, but it doesn't make sense because just imagine in the um, uh, she was uh, mentioning the the conflict for the polyg 
that, that was sorry, the international conflict, like for example, the one for September 11 in the US, in the ISIS, and, and the, this guy, I don't remember his name. Uh, if you are, I, I was imagining people in US, they may think that they are right killing the, thinking that they are doing well just killing their enemies. But what happened on the other side? What happened in the other country? But I, I was so surprised. I, I was, I wasn't able to be here in the last class. I don't know if you've been looking at all these conflicts. I was surprised. They had a lot. Okay, very well, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, actually, depending on how is everything evolving and what are the parts that are involved. Yeah, you are right. There are many kinds of conflicts that we can categorize and then. Uh, uh, try. The good thing about this one is that if you understand uh, why this uh, conflict occur, I mean, uh, who are the participants of the culture, may maybe you will be able to to solve the conflict in a better way, right? So mm -hmm. that is very important. Good, perfect. Thank you, Ana Claudia. Mm -hmm. Any other? Any other comment? Um, it is important to remark that what the what this girl said in the video that the conflict is a situation, it's a normal situation uh, for the human being. So we don't have to be, um, we don't have to always try to avoid the conflict because it's normal. We have always to look for the correct. A solution we have to solve the conflict and always will be a, a conflict so we have to to learn from the previous conflict that we have in every situation and learn from that and try always to to resolve the conflict in the in the best way possible so it's normal for us i think it's important to keep that in mind very good, perfect. It's a very good comment. Yes, actually, you are right. I mean, conflict is part of life. I mean, since we are different people, we are different individuals, definitely there will be always a conflict, right? So there will be always some things that we are not, we, we do not agree completely, right? So you think different, I think different, and that is the beauty of things. But sometimes, because you need to take a decision. I mean, uh, there is a conflict, right? So, but it's part of life. If part of, I mean, wherever you go, uh, whomever you are, so you will be able to to face many conflicts. Good. Any other comment? Well, as you know, teacher, uh, the conflict is an occupational hazard of our daily life. Yeah. Just that we need to be the major uh, how to resolve, like a vision, how to resolve of the correct way. Very good. Yeah, it's like a problem that needs to be solved, right? And uh, sometimes, there is, I mean, conflicts are because of many things. For example, uh, you can have many options to solve a situation, and that is a conflict. I mean, what do I do? Do I do this or this or this? You have many solutions. On the other hand, sometimes there are problems that you believe that there are no solutions on that one. So that is a conflict, right? So you need to look for at least one solution sometimes. It's difficult. Okay, so there are many things. Uh, in the video also, she says something that is very interesting, that for a conflict to exist, it doesn't have to involve two or more individuals. With one individual that... Uh, has a conflict f for anything, I mean, with another person, with a situation, with a process, uh, there is a conflict. Maybe they do not express or uh, they are just thinking about this kind of conflict, but there is a conflict. And maybe you don't even know, right? That there are some problems there in the air, but there are situations where there is something like that. Any other comments or opinion about this? Okay, 
Also, she says something in, in what well, we should say about that individual, but you, I mean, sometimes you have conflict with yourself, right? Sometimes you are thinking two, three things and you have a conflict. What do I do? Do I do this or this other? So imagine, imagine that we have conflicts with ourselves. How, how is it going to be with other people? And how is it going to be with people from a different culture, from different ideologies? from uh, that they have different education, different environments. So definitely that makes it a little bit more difficult, right? You don't understand how do you think that? How is that possible? Because you have a different point of view because of many things that are part of your personality and character. So that is, that is a big thing, right? So, and that's why we have multicultural conflicts. Right. Maybe here in El Salvador, I believe, we don't have that many countries because of multicultural. I mean, yeah, maybe you have people from San Miguel, La Union, Santa Ana, that they have different ways of thinking, but it's not that different. There are just words, ways of cooking, ways of eating that might be different, but it's not a big deal. But what happens when you work every day with people from around the world, and they have different ways of thinking, different ways of acting, behave uh, in similar situations. Definitely, that is something that is, it should be difficult. So how can we, how we can manage this kind of conflict, conflict that are multicultural conflicts? What do you think? I think that it's important to the negotiation, but looking for a neutral solution like, okay, it's not going to be the way I want, I want it, neither your way. We need to look for like uh, stay in the middle or I don't know where maybe your half of your resolution and my half of my resolution being combined. It's kind of difficult, teach. It is difficult. You are so right. I mean, because sometimes you really believe this is the solution. And mm -hmm. yeah, you know what happens, and you, you know this. What happens when you have a conflict with another person uh, is that you try to, to make valid your point of view, right? You try mm -hmm. to convince the other, no, this is the best way because of this and this, and you provide reasons. Um, sometimes the reasons are valid, sometimes not. But that's what you do, I mean, and you are very right, Ana Claudia. Negotiation is key. Of course, depending on things, I mean, there are things that are more relevant than other. But for example, a conflict that is very common at work is, uh, we're going to have a meeting. We're going to eat food. What do you want to eat? Oh, that is a conflict, right? Mm. Pizza, tacos, hamburger. No, I, <laughs> I can't eat hamburger. No, but I mean, that is very easy. You are going to enjoy together. You are going to do many things. But sometimes there's a conflict. And sometimes people get angry because of little things like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're so right. That I've been there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, food sometimes is very important, right? No, I don't want to eat that thing. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot agree on those little things, how you are going to agree on other things? Negotiate, mm -hmm. right? And the problem is for the leader from the people that is the head of that one. I mean, you have a very nice idea to meet together. To, to I mean, in your mind, it was like, it's going to be amazing. We're going to speak. We're going to laugh. But there we are fighting because of the food. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. you're right. Very good. Negotiation is key. Any other comment about this? Uh -huh. How can we handle any any kind of conflict, let's say, not only multicultural, but any kind of conflict. How can we do that? Uh, 
well, in my case, teacher, when maybe someone crashed my car okay, or something like that, I all the time I want to make a deal with the other people, uh, with the other person that maybe has the fault uh, for the accident. And I try to make a deal in the way that the, I don't want to take advantage of the situation. If not, that I, I want to be uh, partial. Because if I have the fall, I have to pay. If she has the fall or, or he has the fall, uh, she has to cover the, 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 all the damage. Very good. So, Actually, that, that should be the way, right? That should be. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, uh, you are very right. I mean, sometimes you need to stop and analyze and try to solve and make a deal. So it's part of the negotiation, right? If you mm -hmm. do this, I'm going to do this. And, and let's solve together this one. Um, yeah. That should be it. Very good. I guess, I guess that if you solve in that way, you stop conflict. Very good, perfect. Yeah, if you, uh, you know, that is part of any negotiation, right? And negotiation is like, I give you and you give me, and we can we can agree on what is the best way out of this. Good, perfect. Any other comments, any other? Hello, teacher. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, for me, the solution is propose the participation to education the, the population. Uh, development citizen participation and the strategies uh, implement the element that contribute the integration the the, the the group of the people okay very key I mean that is a very important thing integration whenever you are in the workplace um, I mean you need to try to listen everybody right? And then, of course, depending on the conflict and depending if this is going to be part of your job or your duties, uh, also taking consideration your the company, right? The values of the company and many other things. So that is also key to integrate everybody. So we feel that the solution that at the end was the one that we choose. Uh, well, that is that was the best. Even if it's not the one that I wanted, I mean, that was the best solution. The real problem comes when, I mean, when you are angry, right? Sometimes you're angry. We, I mean, we're humans. For example, I have seen the news recently and you have seen that it's very common that on the streets, people, they crash, right? Or there is traffic. And there are some people that they even fight. I mean, physical fighting on the streets. I mean, how can you do that one? I know that we are in the traffic and we want to go to our jobs and we have a lot of things to do. But I mean, to go out of the car and fight with another person, I mean, that is a very huge conflict because of reasons that are no big deal. Maybe it's not your fault or many things happen. Why do you believe that people get into that one? They are not able to solve the problem but they go to the last consequences. What do you believe that happens? Teacher. Yep. I think that um, in, the, in the education, it's important to incentivize uh, children to use in the dialogue. But for experience, I... I have to say that when, when I was in the school and in some uh, subject, the, the, the topic was the dialogue, it was very boring. So maybe we need to, we need to other perspective of, of this and perhaps the children will learn in the appropriate form. Okay. That is very important, yes. Education and the way that we teach new generations how to face conflicts, right? How to avoid fighting. I mean, if you yell or if you physical 
fight with other people, you are not going to find any solution, right? So it's useless. And then when you are calmed down, try to go and, and look for a solution, right? Um, it's also very important try to think or try to feel what the other person is feeling right. It's not easy sometimes, but we sometimes forget about that. We just think about what we experience, what we want, what, what is our need. So that is a big problem. In a training, I remember that we were speaking about this one at, at work, you know, how to handle conflicts because that happens all the time. Sometimes even with, uh, I mean, people that are part, are part of your team, sometimes they are fighting with you. They say, I don't believe in this. I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this that you are telling me. Uh, so you need to mirror them because, yeah, one of uh, that person is in that worship says something that is very important. Nobody in the world wakes up in the morning and says, today I'm going to crash my car. Or today I'm going to fight with the first person that I find in my way. Or today I'm going to destroy my reputation at my work. No. There are things that happen, situations that happen that get you some time uh, to go to a certain point. Of course, you need to calm down. You need to breathe right and try to solve the issue because nobody is looking for for a fight for a job i mean for something like that everybody we are trying to to have a nice day but some situations sometimes are out of our hands so that happens a lot okay speaking about multicultural uh imagine i mean in el salvador as we were discussing that doesn't happen because we don't have a lot of culture. But how do you think it will be if you go and live in other country? I mean, you go to, do you remember that we were speaking, where would you like to go and live or visit? And everybody will say different countries. But I mean, how do you think it's going to be if you actually go and live in those countries? Don't you think there's going to be any conflicts? What kind of conflicts can we find there? Mm, I remember visiting another country. The first conflict I faced is that whenever I was uh, saying good morning or good afternoon or good evening, good night, nobody was answering that place. <laughs> and I was like, what? And you know, my best, I was with my best friend and she told me at the end, you know what, stop. These people, they don't answer. They don't know how to say hello or they, I don't know. But it was a cultural situation. They were polite, let's say in that way. But like these words, good morning, good afternoon. It's like they don't exist. <laughs> it was a conflict. But uh, for me, it was shocking. That is true. I mean, uh, things like that happens because mm -hmm. you get used to do something for you that is like normal, right? To say hello. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you go to the office, I, I do that all the time when I go to the office. Good morning. Hello. How are you? It's like, mm -hmm. like the first day. I mean, you go and say hello to everybody. How are you? Did you have but breakfast? people answer to you. I mean, exactly. there is a uh, like a uh, vice versa answer. Uh -huh. But in that place, <laughs> no they were like nobody is listening <laughs> yeah and that happens because for them it's not normal it's like how strange mm -hmm. is that person telling me hello i don't know that person so it's it's a cool multicultural thing right so because it's you and in other country that happened very good mm -hmm. and at the end i mean in other country you need to adapt yourself right at the end you say we're gonna stop i mean what can we do mm -hmm. Good, perfect. Any other conflict that you believe that you can find whenever you go? Or have you experience with other people from other countries? Um, for example, in my case, teacher, I say I would like to visit or live in 
Canada. And one conflict that I might face, it could be the, the weather because I'm not, I'm not um, get used to that kind of weather, the uh, cold weather and perhaps it could be a, a conflict. And also, um, I think people who, who move, move on to another country, they feel kind of homesick um, that those a melancholy feeling could um, could get to me, and it would be another conflict. Feeling lonely, feeling uh, far away from my country, from my family, from my friends, and because um, all the people that go from this country, they always remember something from 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 here and. Something sometimes that happened and 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 at some point we will find ourselves lonely and uh, very good. That is so true. That is so true. I mean, even if the country where you go is amazing and the places are beautiful and there are many opportunities, definitely you are going to be homesick. I mean. Uh, those actually the two uh, things that you mentioned are the main, the two main reasons why people sometimes go back to their own places. I mean, weather sometimes is difficult. I mean, and the most of the countries that people would like to go are, are, are cold, right? So if you go to Europe, in some countries there, for example, I had a friend that she went to Finland. I mean, Finland is very cold very very cold i was researching about other countries where the rain is very hard the weather is so heavy so i mean it's not good and also even if you have people friends there sometimes it's difficult to live there and uh, that is a big conflict with yourself right thinking oh what am i doing here i mean i have a very very good job and People here are nice and the food is good, but it's not like the one in my country. Right? That's why a lot of people, they visit the country. I mean, you want to go from El Salvador and live in other places, but you always want to come back. That is for sure. Very good. Perfect. What other conflicts do you believe we will find if we move to other countries? What do you think? Uh, I guess that is the most important, the languages. That oh, that's... Be a, a, yeah, that could be a serious conflict. That is true. I mean, uh, your English at this point is very good. I believe everybody can go and live in England or Australia. And even yeah. when you speak... What about... What about Asia? Yeah, that's difficult. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, Asia. sometimes opportunities come and you have to take a decision in, in language. Yeah, that's okay. Big, yeah, it's a big conflict. Yeah, <laughs> you have you have to learn right away, right? Because you need to you need to start living your life by yourself, not being with somebody else all the time. So it's a big conflict. Very good. There are many other things, for example, racism, right? If you go to Europe, for example, even when they are very advanced and they have a lot of, I mean, their technology, their political uh, systems, their, the culture is very good. And they say that is the first level of countries. There are people that are racists. So that, that I believe is one of the main concerns because People, they, I mean, they are very direct and they can offend you because they want to offend you. They want you to know that they don't like you. So that is a huge problem, right? If you go to other countries. And what would you do if you go to other countries and you have a lot of conflicts there, but you really want to stay? What would you do? 
to feeding. What do you think? Another another conflict of problem. I think we won't be able to find <laughs> pupusas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. Well, what you can do is to learn to do pupusas, right? And then, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then try to, to do yours there at home. So that would be maybe expensive, but it's a solution. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have one of my best friends. She She's living in Canada so from some years ago. She's living there. Here, when she was living here, she never cooked. Now she's an expert in making tamales, pupusas, atoles. <laughs> and she, every time she cooks, she's posting pictures and stuff like that. That is so true. In mind that people here in, in El Salvador, sometimes you have the opportunity to eat all those amazing things. And it's like, no, I don't want. But when you go to other countries that you know that it's going to be almost impossible for you to eat some things, well, then you have to and do also to find the ingredients. It's not so easy. It's not easy. I mean, mm -hmm. there are well, places. Like in the USA, uh, are very expensive. If you, if you are lucky to find, it's very expensive. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is true. So it's going to be very expensive or maybe impossible, or you need to try to, to do it yourself. I mean, you cannot go to a restaurant and, and, and buy food. So you need to do or it. Or even though you find uh, mm, the taste, it's not the same. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I mean, you can find it, you can cook it yourself, you can learn many things, but since the ingredients are not going to be the same, and I mean, there are many things that are interfere with that one, of course. Yeah, when you come to El Salvador, it's like, I mean, you see that everybody, it doesn't matter the country where they come from. Uh, if you are Salvadorian, if you go to other country and they come back visiting the country, first thing that they want to do is to eat some specific things. I want this and this and this, and I want to go to this place and eat that specific food so it's a big deal actually good so i was asking you how can you fit in what strategies would you implement if you really want to stay in another country and you want to fit in well in my mm. opinion the First step is trying to learn the language, the main language, because, uh, for example, if you are thinking to change uh, your um, place, your, your country, maybe uh, you need to look for another job, totally different as usual. And if you are working remote, maybe the place is not a big problem. But if you are, uh, for example, thinking to move um, to United States, you know, the salary is totally different because uh, one hamburger, for example, here, uh, the cost is around $8. And maybe if you are trying to buying uh, hamburgers in United States, the price is double or more. So you need more um, money, yeah. <laughs> more salary. And maybe uh, for me, the first one is learn um, the main, la the main uh, language to so looking for another job. And second is try to save a lot. Maybe the, the first uh, amount because you need to uh, create a budget and try to um, organize your finals. And I don't know, maybe, well, I think that it depends because if you are a, uh, look in another country and you don't have family there, maybe you need to uh, look for a department and different things, stuff like that. No, 
Uh, but for me, the first one is a language. Maybe it's not to be a um, expert, but you need to uh, try to understand for whatever, for looking a basic job, because it's, I think that is complex when you are uh, living in other country and you don't understand anything. So for me, those things are very important. Very good, perfect. So yeah, definitely the language. So it's going to be the key for you to move, for you to learn, for you to grow anywhere you are, right? So that will be very good, perfect. Thank you, Roxanne. Any other? For me, teacher, uh, for example, um, practice the dynamic of the silver stem and get knowledge, communication in activity listening, promote the respect, the communication and tolerance, learning to listen, dialogue and communication correctly with the other person, uh, respecting the op opinions, um correct the student to exercise the regulation the role the step the different uh so country different uh institutions institutions okay. only very good so yeah all of that is very important and you say something that is very very actually very important to communicate properly right because it's not just to learn the language but to know how to express correctly depending on what uh, the other culture is. So avoid things that are not properly uh, accepted there, even when those are things very normal for you. Adapt yourself, learn the culture, right? Learn the way that they act, behave, and the way they expect you to be in certain aspects without losing your, your cultural identity. So that is a very important thing. Okay, very good. Any other comments? Any other strategy that you can say about this? Uh, mm, uh, for example, teacher, I think um, based on, um, on some experience, I think a good strategy it could be gather or get close to people um, that we have something in common. For example, uh, ethnicity or religion. Um, people from the same from the same country and gather with a group of people and who help me and to for example um they could give me some food or and help me with payments or anything because and in, in one group and it could be a, a, a lot of help. So uh, I saw that sometimes people uh, go to one foreign country and they try, they, they find to that kind, that kind of groups and they establish because they receive help from, from other people that even is not their family. It's just people that is linked with some something with them. So. It's important to uh, get in touch with some people that could help me. And one way could be one um, 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 uh, a group like uh, from the same, the same country or a religious group. Very good. That is a very nice strategy. Actually, many people, they do that one. I mean, uh, if you research online, you will find Salvadorians, for example, in Italy. So there are people that maybe they don't live in the same city, but they are in Italy and sometimes they help each other. They uh, get together so they can cook uh, things. Uh, they send messages, they have conversation and that is important. I mean, if you are in different countries, the first thing that you want to do is to get somebody that is familiar. Maybe not your family, maybe not your friends, but people that understand the culture that you have. 
Latin American culture, or if it's from the same country, yeah, that is good. And uh, actually, that's why there are many groups of people like that in other countries, Salvadorians, Mexican, in other countries. So that happens a lot. They try to look for people similar for for them to to get easier the the staying there in this country. So it's a very good thing. Good, good. Any other? Okay, so we're going to watch another video and we're going to provide opinions about this one. This is a good one, actually. So never do these illegal things in other countries. I believe there are no words in this one, but we're going to check it. Okay, I'm going to pause it because there are no words and it's kind of fast, but in mind, for example, uh, it's not a good thing to impersonate Hitler. So, for example, in 2011, a Canadian tourist was arrested for doing a Nazi salute in Berlin. In Germany, you cannot do that. In Europe, actually, in Europe, it's not possible. I mean, if you do that in Poland, in France, not good, right? Not good at all. So that is the first one. The other one says jump a queue. Uh, queue jumpers on the London Underground may have to pay 1,000 pounds of fine. Do you know what is to jump in a queue or jump a queue? What is that? Take advantage and try to go before someone or, or a lot of people. The day to day here in Salvador. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, conflicts in, uh, on mm -hmm. the street and traffic is because of this. It's because uh, there are accidents because they, there are people that they want to jump the other and go and they don't want to wait, right? Mm -hmm. That is a big problem. And that happens. I mean, you are sometimes there uh, uh, waiting in the bank or somewhere and there is a friend saying, hey, could you please do me the favor? And it's like, mm, okay. So, but here, let's say that maybe you don't do it, maybe you don't like it, but there are people that they do it. In other countries, it's unacceptable. It's not possible. Mind you can pay here in England, you can pay 1,000 pounds if you do that. Okay. The other one it says, sing now the songs. But soccer fans singing rude songs only have to pay 500 pounds. What do you think? So the songs that you sing uh, in public, let's say, it shouldn't be like naughty songs, no bad words, uh, not in the public events, let's say. So it's not good at all. In my end, let's check the other one. Okay, chew gum in Singapore. Chewing gum is so thrown up and you may get a 100, what is the, the name of the coin there? Do you know the currency? I don't remember. Fine, in jail, you can go to jail if you chew gum in Singapore. I mean, that is kind of crazy. What do you think about this? I won't do that the next time that I will that that, that I visit this country. <laughs> yeah, the thing is that sometimes we don't know, right? Mind you go to Singapore and you're nervous because you are going to see the city and then you open and start chewing gum. My goodness, big problems came arise. No, you were asking about um, the the fine, right? The yep. the, the amount is. Uh, is one hundred thousand dollar? Oh, okay, very good. In my end, that is. I mean, <laughs> you need to research when you go to other countries. Definitely, that is something important. Let's check the other ones.
Okay, let's check the other one. It says, eat too much ketchup in France. French schools have limited their students' ketchup and mayo intakes since 2011. So it's not well accepted. Just a little bit is fine. Maybe because they're fighting against obesity, as I understand it. So obesity if you put a lot of... Uh -huh. Obesity and di dia diabetes. Diabetes, yeah, that is true. But in my, in my that you don't know, you have a lot of ketchup, mayonnaise, everybody. Maybe it's not a fine or not a jail thing. Everybody's going to look at you and it's like, oh, that's strange. That's not good. The next one says, feed the pigeons. He might in that one. They poop so much, it costs the average Venetian citizen 275 euros per year to clean up. So you cannot feed the pigeons. Remind that one. Any comments on this? I just, I just don't want to imagine that policy, let's say, here in Santa Ana, in Cat Cathedral. <laughs> uh, yeah, there. I mean, I mean, there are places where you can buy the food and feed them rice. Like, mm -hmm. it's a pleasure to, to do that one. <laughs> but it's too expensive. Maybe there are too many there, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the other one, it says, not walk your dog. Failure to take your dog on a daily walk in Rome may produce a $700 fine. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. So you have to, to register your, your dog in a, in a, I don't know, maybe in a, in a bit pet store or something like that in order to, to catch you, okay? Yeah, and that is why sometimes you see in the movies that there are people that they have that job because, uh -huh. I mean, it's not because it's very good for, yes. for the dog, healthy, but it's because it's illegal not to watch your dog sometimes. But that isn't the benefit of the, of the animals. I mean, it's like a policy, it's like a law in those countries, but it's it works. It's good because you make people to think very well before uh, yeah. having a pet if they will be able to take care of it like a human being. That is it. So it's like when they are, the law, they protect animals, right? Right. So if you are going to have a dog, you need to be responsible not only for the food, but also to so the, the dog is happy and healthy, right? So it's a very good thing. The other one is an interesting one. So catch a bus while you're sick. Forget about COVID. This has been illegal in London since the Victorian era. Imagine that one. Did you know that? Not possible to take a bus if you're sick in London. Okay, the other one is interesting as well. Pee in the ocean. We're not quite <laughs> sure how the Portuguese police enforces law. So <laughs> what do you think about this? <laughs> it's, it's a very good to... measure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe the, the comment is kind of interesting because, I mean, if you are inside of the of the ocean, how do you, how do you know if you're a police? <laughs> how they know that you uh -huh. pee? Hey, you're peeing there. No, I'm not. I'm just here. Maybe swimming. in a pool is kind of something you can you can um, identify because I don't know if it's real, or, but I saw some video where the water color change when someone is peeing. <laughs> I don't know if it's real. Oh, it's real. That is real. So okay, there are some yeah. chemicals or something like that, right? Exactly, it's a yeah. chemical that you put in that one. So if that happens, then you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good one, but it's kind of difficult to, to tell, right? Okay, the other one says selfie with the Buddha. It's illegal in Sri Lanka because you are turning your back on him. 
religious beliefs and uh, religious culture things also are important. What do you think about this? Do you know about this? No, I didn't know. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, your religion or yeah. So for some people, it's very important, right? Hey, don't do that yeah. one, please. So it's like that. It's like it's like the the cows in India. The exactly. Hey. I mean, yeah, I remember that I saw a, a stand-up comedy show from a man that he was talking about that when he went to India, and I mean, if. Uh, a lot of people are there and if there are men that is there on the street they say oh i'm man, bye but if it's a cow everybody stops and the cow has to pass the street they say. so it's a very good one okay cars out loud in the uae penal code swearing disgraces the modesty of a person so you cannot say bad words in general in uh, out loud in my in El Salvador, who would be that one? And the last one here is says, go shirtless. In Barcelona, fines for walking around half naked could cost you up to 260 euros. So you cannot take off your shirt. What do you think about this? No comments? It's kind of strange, right? In our country, it will be difficult. Very, very difficult. Yeah, in a very hot day. I mean, mm -hmm. some because places. Yeah. The dog agrees. Let's check it out. <laughs> Okay, the other one says celebrate Valentine's Day. It's banned in Pakistan because it focuses on love, not directed towards God. No Valentine's Day in Pakistan. Not possible. No flowers, no dinner, no wine, no kisses, please. No chocolates. Ni mine, no chocolates. I mean, here for Valentine's Day, everybody's looking for teddy bears and things like that one. I mean, in all America, right? So, but I mean, that happens. So that's but, kind of... <laughs> the good thing is they don't have to play the secret friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, at, at the work, that is not good, right? Because you always don't get something good and it's kind yeah. of... <laughs> I don't know why people, they continue doing that one. I mean, uh, in the workplace, I don't think it's important. It's not relevant. Maybe with your friends or, of course, with your significant other, right? Anyway, yes. there are different kind of cultural things at work as well. Spank your child. I'm sorry? Okay. So spank your child. Sweden was the first country to make this law. Should others follow it? So it's not possible to punish physically your child in Sweden. What do you think about this? Mm. So it's against the law. So it's not possible, never. In Sweden, no. they have a very good... I, I, I think that in a advanced culture like uh, the Sweden culture, perhaps not find the child to be, be benefit, but uh, profit, but here in Latin American culture, I don't think uh, it will be a good option because the children needs the the guys uh, from the guy in a um, heart. And wait, so it's important <laughs> uh, here in, in in those countries because uh, otherwise the 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 kids will rise with 
good with bad manners, I think. It's difficult, right? You are right. In Latin American, I mean that that should be. It wouldn't. It wouldn't work. I mean, it would be a a big problem because Latin American culture is like that one, right? They, they really want to spam or nothing. get physical punishment. Huh? <laughs> nothing of flip flop right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> okay, so grow a millet. Iranians absolutely despise western hairstyles so you cannot have the long hair with a mullet so uh, imagine that thing so and it is because they really don't like western culture not only hairstyles the culture for them uh, from mostly the north american is not good right they really don't like the other one says just a baby walker Get caught with the baby walkers uh, in Canada, and you may be fined up to one hundred thousand. Imagine that is something that I didn't know. To be honest with you, get caught with—I mean, no baby walkers. So the babies they cannot use that one. You cannot find things like that one there. It's because of the accidents. I was reading something like that that too many accidents happens in this. Maybe walkers. That yeah, is true. It's the root of a lot of accidents. And you know how these cultures are that whenever they they see a a percentage of things that are, that are rising, they they do something about it, right? So that is good. Action. Very good. Let's move on and check the other ones. Okay, climb a tree. If that wasn't bad enough, climb a tree in Toronto and you'll be fined $365. Not possible to get hocotes. Sorry. What do you think about that? Not even coconuts. Yeah, no coconuts. I mean, how do they get the fruits? <laughs> well, that is a very good question. But I mean, maybe uh, not much in the city, but uh, I believe everybody will have climbed a tree right in the past. So, but that is not possible in Toronto, not possible. Of course, there might be a reason, maybe accidents as well, right? Okay, this is a good one. Flush the toilet at night. Better clear your bowels before 10 p.m. in Switzerland or else it's noise pollution. Imagine that. What do you think about that? It's too much. <laughs> I think <laughs> sometimes this is very annoying when you are sleeping and you hear uh, uh, the flush in the light. It's like, oh, because it's very loud. That sound. Okay. And the thing is that in the quiet of the night, sometimes is, I mean, all the sounds get louder, right? I mean, in my in El Salvador, that your neighbor has reggaeton at two in the morning, right? How you can compare with Switzerland that they did not allow these, it might not other sounds. It should be a quiet place. It should be very peaceful, to be honest with you. Yeah, interesting. The next one says frown. In Milan, the only exceptions are for those in hospitals or attending funerals. Other than that, you cannot do like this, like in the, in the face, right? You cannot be like that. It's not correct. That is kind of crazy. In Galicia, Spain, build a sandcastle. Even kids may be fined up to 1,500 euros. In mind that one. No sandcastle. Why do you believe this exists? Why they don't want sandcastle? Do you know something about? I don't know. Maybe for the animal that is there in the zone. 
there mm -hmm. might be a reason, yeah. yeah. Because there are some crabs they or anything like that one, right? Yeah. Or there are eggs from animals, maybe. Yeah, that sounds like a possible reason. Okay, so they are the other four. Disrupt a wedding. You could be sent to prison for two years for doing this in Australia. So you cannot do the job of talk now or be in silence forever. So in mind, that's kind of crazy. Wear high heels. Greek lawmakers wear worry heels will damage historic sites. So in some places in Greece, you cannot wear high heels. Imagine. What do you think about that one? Hmm. Makes sense, but I guess there are options, right? Just yeah. in some places they are not allowed, but people is free to use them in the other ones, I guess. Yeah, that is so. I mean, if you go to restaurants and things like that, of course you can. Mm. Yeah. So I mind that you go and visit Greece and uh, you cannot take a picture with high heels. So it's going to be like with your tennis shoes and that's it. Huh. Next one says, keep goldfish in a bowl. Rum ban bowls as they limit oxygen flow and can cause fish to go blind. <laughs> My in that one. They really care about animals, can you see? I mean, if you're thinking that because yeah. fish might go, might go blind, it's not for sure that it's going to happen. And they really care about animals. I mean, you cannot have a, a bowl with a goldfish. I, I guess it's a very small place for a fish. It's not good. There is no oxygen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, is, that is not good at all. And if you don't clean that very often, and then, Mm -hmm. By the maintenance, of course, is a problem. Yeah. Okay. In Australia, vacuuming is illegal for done. It done too loud. You cannot vacuum your house if it's too loud. You need to buy a very special vacuum machine. Okay, so hike naked. Why would you like to hike naked? I don't know. But in 2011, a Swiss man was fined more than 100 for his bare bottom walk. I mean, only the shirt. He didn't have the shirt. And he had a fine of $100. So that is interesting. I don't know why, but it's kind of interesting. Wear camouflage. Camouflage is only allowed to be worn by Jamaica's military. Other than that, in Jamaica, you cannot wear anything that is camouflage. That is crazy. I have a lot of things that have camouflage, so <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Be drunk in a pub. This law is the reason British people are never hungover. What do you think about that? You can go to a pub that is like a bar, but you cannot be drunk there. What do you think about this? No hangover. That is a good thing, right? But uh, imagine that, I mean, to go to a bar here in El Salvador, people go to a bar and they are very drunk. I mean, not maybe. everybody, of course, but that's the reason maybe. you go to a bar. Maybe it could be for uh, avoid uh, any more problems. That is true. Problems, any... Uh, Accidents, right? If you go home, and I mean, that is not good. The other one is a good one, in my opinion. Give your baby a bad name. In Portugal, there is a list of approved names uh, made by the government. Insane. Not possible to name your baby Bitcoin, for example. What Very do you fair. think about that? <laughs> 
Heartburn. That's <laughs> for the baby. It's good for the baby if you want a crazy name. But imagine that they have a list of names. You can name your baby only with this list of names. The list will be public. Yeah, actually, it's a public list that you can check before you go and uh, certify your baby. But I don't know how many names are there. I mean, if there is a list of a lot of names, of course, it's a good thing, right? Cristiano. Uh, let's check the other ones. Okay, so this play at the two. Oh my goodness, that's a lot. Tourists have been refused entry for having visible tattoos of Buddha. It doesn't say which country, but I believe it's uh, like Sri Lanka or any place like that one, right? But you cannot show your tattoos. You can have your tattoos, but you can show in public. Hmm? Interesting. Toss plastic confetti in Mobile, Alabama. This is illegal. We understand why the stuff gets everywhere. So, no confetti in Alabama. Hmm? Share memes, okay? This shouldn't be good for me. I really love memes. It's illegal in Australia because of copyright issues. Outrageous. Not Facebook for people in Australia. Imagine, what do you think about this? The most of the posts on Facebook are memes. I mean, yeah. Social media is full of memes, right? So, um, well, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of strange. Where last in the world in Russia and Belarus is a good excuse to not buy your partner lingerie. Very sad. I do not agree on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no good. I mean, I mean Russian girls in mind they cannot wear lingerie. No good. Okay. So spend all your pennies. Canadians cannot use more than 25 pennies in a single transaction. Maybe it's good for the banks or for the people that receive the money that you are counting a lot of uh, coins, right? It's a good idea. But if you have a lot of coins, what do you do? Yeah, for the cashier, I, I, it's the best. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. I agree on that one. Okay, uh, touch yourself, <laughs> all right? Self-pleasure in Indonesia may put you behind bars for seven months. We are not going to comment this one. The next one, it says, wear a Winnie the Pooh <laughs> Gaps in Poland, the pandless bear is considered too indecent for children. What do you think about this? Why he is innocent? No pants, he's naked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Like all the customers of Disney. But you know, cultures are different. That's that's why this, these things are for, for us. It's like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. But for maybe the things that we do here in El Salvador for some other people is like, like for example, eating pupusa with your hands, right? Some people, they come from other countries like, that's not good, right? But that's the culture. We really enjoy people so when we eat them with the fingers. So be careful if you go to Poland and you have a Winnie the Pooh shirt. I don't have any of those. Anyways. The next one says, shake a rug out the window. It's only, this is only illegal in the UK before 8 a.m. Apparently, it can be very noisy. You know, this kind of laws um, is because maybe in the past, a lot of people, they did that one and caused a lot of problems. I believe that, that that is the reason why. Because, I mean, to shake your rug, 
I don't think it's a big deal, but maybe in the past, a lot of dust, a lot of noise. Dust, just imagine. Maybe I think that happened because the vacu they, they didn't have vacuums. That is true. I believe that this is a very old thing. Sometimes that happens. Uh, Lows are sometimes very old and maybe nowadays it's not necessary, but anyways. Let's check the other one. The attendance. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna check that one after we finish. Don't worry. Okay, it says dance after midnight. It was banned in Japan for being too American. Don't be too American. <laughs> Tell a fortune. In Maryland, America, you could receive 500 fine or a year in jail. Well, that is a lot, right? That is a lot. Anyways, of course, that is something that we don't do here in El Salvador. Fart in public. In 2011, air falling low in Malawi made farting a crime. Not possible. I believe that is a good thing, actually. I mean, here in El Salvador, if you travel by bus sometimes, oh, that is a nightmare. That is not good. So it could be a good thing. Though. Be overweight. Japanese over 40s are fine for being overweight unless they are a sumo wrestler. You cannot be that fat in Japan. Not possible. Because of healthy things, and I mean, they understand about these things. Okay, the other one says, ride cattle drunk, but ride a cow while sober and the Scottish police won't mind, okay? So if you are riding a cow and you are drunk, in Scotland, you are going to have a lot of problems. Interesting. Shoot a water gun, oh my goodness. Cambodia banned them to prevent traffic accidents. I just don't get it. Traffic accidents and water gone. Maybe we have to check statistics there. Reincarnate without permission. <laughs> this is the craziest. <laughs> you cannot go back to life, my friend. If you die, you die. Decide. <laughs> Make up your mind. It's really funny because how you know that maybe that person re reincarnate? How would the day prove that? <laughs> well, you know. I mean, <laughs> I was oh, I was the king of this. You time. were, you, you were Eric in the last life. Yeah. <laughs> you I are mean. not allowed to be here. <laughs> okay, so this was this was a good one, right? Okay. Have a second glass of wine. A Bolivian man may even divorce his wife for drinking in public. Speaking about machism, right? <laughs> Women cannot have a second glass of wine. Not possible. So cultures are different. Okay, hang your dirty laundry. In Trinidad and Tobago, people don't want to see your clothes from the street. I guess that is a good thing, you know. Why on the street? Why outside? You need to do that at home, inside, of course. But that is my opinion, of course. Wrestle a beer. Not the South African has beers, but if it did, it's illegal. So please don't fight with a beer. Slide on ice. The British Parliament was made up a load of fun suckers in the 1800s. Okay. So 
it's not possible to slide on ice. As I understand, this is depending on where and when. So it's not that it's forbidden, right? Because there are mountains where you can go and slide. Carry planks along the path, the pavement, another Victorian law. Now go carry planks while sliding on ice. Okay. Yeah, that is all. That is very all right. Oops. Let's just move a little bit forward. So these are the last one. Handle salmon suspiciously. Next time you're in a British fishmongers, don't do this. You've been warned. So don't touch suspiciously my salmon, my friend. Are you going to buy it or not? So that's kind of strange. Make your chicken cross the road. In Georgia, the chicken did indeed not cross the road. So it's not possible for chickens to cross the road. Which one is the craziest, do you think? In your opinion, which one is the most strange? The reincarnation. <laughs> the reincarnation. I mean, okay, but you can see here how people around the world, we are different, right? We have different cultures, different laws, different, I mean, if there are laws against that kind of things, it's because something happened. I mean, something happened, right? It's not um, just because, huh? And we don't, we don't have any law or restriction to the search to be mentioned. Eh? Yeah, we don't have, uh, yeah. Maybe that was another question I was going to ask you. Which uh, law in Latin America or in El Salvador you, you have seen that is, is crazy, it's not, it's not good? We don't have any, right? At least not in El Salvador, as I understand, right? We have a lot of laws. Here in El Salvador, we have a lot of laws, but none of those are like crazy. But normal law. Normal, yeah. Uh, or maybe maybe the question might be different. Which law or which uh, things that we do in El Salvador do you believe that people in other countries might find strange? What do you think? Any, any habits that we have in El Salvador that people in other country, they might have a strength, may, might find it kind of, I don't know. Why do you do that? Habit, maybe, habit or law? Habit, yeah. I'm sorry, Roxanne. Maybe eating pupusas with our hands. I believe that is the most common, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. You have to put the coffee, uh, the bread on the coffee and things like that. Mm -hmm. that might be. Okay, very good. Any other that you might think about? Uh, maybe the way so easy that people in El Salvador can get a licensed driver. Uh, because uh, in, in the street, we see that there are a lot of uh, behavior um, really behavior from all the, the driver and maybe they they wonder people from other country they wonder how is possible that this this kind of people get uh, the license driver so easy and yeah I I I saw it in in the previous months when I tried to to get my license driver that I just uh, go in one um one I don't know block. I try one block and then I, I get my my license driver and I didn't so much about about uh, driving but uh, I think I am uh, a good driver now but in that time I not I know I know it wasn't that that good but uh, maybe other people that get the license driver they may Cows and accidents, or it's very curious. Okay, very good. 
Uh, yeah, here in Salvador, I mean, as long as you pass the test and the psychological test, you can get your driver's license, that's it. And you pay, of course, for them. Uh, and yes, there are people on the street that they, I mean, they are very dangerous. Please, everybody be careful whenever you are outside. Any other? I think in the same line, uh, uh, Marcos was saying, um, I think the people in, from another country, um, they, um, I think when, when they are visiting us, uh, they, when they see how people drive in, they, they like, wow, how, how, how could they do that when, when they saw the, the, that kind of things? And how the police didn't, don't do anything, how, and they are wondering many things. I think they, uh, there is a thing that they, they are surprised, very surprised when they see everything in the traffic. You are right. I mean, when uh, people from other country, they come to El Salvador, maybe they see things that they are not that happy about. Traffic is one of those. I mean, the craziness in traffic, uh, sometimes people, they just put the garbage on the street, um, things that are dirty, uh, that doesn't work, things like that, like that disorganization, things like that are the ones that maybe they believe is no good and that nobody does anything, right? It's like, sometimes the police, they come and they see something that is not correct, they just go by, right? So that is true. That is something that some other people, uh, they don't care. And you know, even in Latin America, there are very similar situations, but sometimes they care more than here in El Salvador. So that might be it. Okay, we're going to check the attendance. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Maria Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claro. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. So we are going to continue. We were speaking about uh, so about cultures and conflicts. So we are going to read a little bit more about that one here just to finish the class. So here we go. So the first uh, part, the first two paragraphs are going to be for Maria Alejandra. Please help us. Okay, teacher. <laughs> Um, culture is an essential part of conflict and conflict resolution. Cultures are like underground rivers that run through our lives and relationships, giving us messages that shape our, our perception, attribution, judgments and ideas for sale and others. Two, two cultures are two. power, two cultures are powerful. They are often unconscious, unconscious, unconscious in 
influencing conflict and attempts to resolve conflict in perceptible way. Uh, cultures are more than language, dress, and food customs. Cultural group may share red, 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 red ethnic, ethnicity, ethnicity, ethnicity of nationality, but they also arise from cleavage. Clevish, clevish, of clevishes of generation, socioeconomic class, sexual orientation, abilities and disabilities, political and religious affiliation, language and gender, to name only a few. Good. What did you understand in this one? <laughs> Give me a second. Of course. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, maybe that when I have an opinion or when I say that culture, uh, I believe or the other person believe that it's only a specific topics or a specific uh, maybe position that you think um, is a general topic that you define your person or maybe for example that say that dress or uh -huh. it's not only that you see for the, the other country that um, typical I don't know to say that food or dress or like this, you know, it's more that to or abilities that the person have and is a special that for this country or different compared with the others. Okay. Very good, thank you. Yeah, actually that is it. I mean, cultures is more than how you look like, how you dress, uh, your sexual orientation. There are many things we saw in the video. I mean, crazy things for us, but it's part of their culture. They believe different things. And that's what it is, right? So the other two paragraphs are going to be for um, Yvonne. Is it possible, Yvonne? Not possible, okay, Roxanne. Okay, let me see. Pero tengo que mi celular se está descargando. Oh, I see. You can connect it if you, if it's possible. Okay. Uh, how cultures work? Actually, two things. Okay, sorry. Two things are essential to remember about cultures. They are always, always changing and they relate to symbolic dimension of life. The symbolic dimension is a place where we were constantly making meaning and enacting. Enacting, thank you, enacting or identities 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 thank you cultural message from the group we belong to got to give us information about what is meaningful or or important and who are and who we are in the world and the relay in the in relation to other or identities. Cultural messages simply are what everyone in a group knows that outsiders to the not. They are the water fish swim in. Unaware? Unaware. Uh -huh. 
on our thank you on our of its effect on their vision they are a series of lenses lenses or lenses 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 that thank you that shape that we see and don't see how we perce perceive 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 thank you how we perceive and interpret and where we draw boundaries boundaries in sh in shaping our values cultures contain starting points of currencies starting points are those places it's it's natural to begin to begin to begin sorry whether with individual or group concerns with the big picture or particularly particularity particularities 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 thank you currency are those things and care about that influence in shape or interaction with others good what did you get from this well the first one um when we have a specific um maybe um culture or ideas uh, but uh, como arraigadas I, I no sé cómo decirlas en inglés uh, the thing is when you have a, a, um, a specific uh, como rasgo or i don't know maybe when when you try to uh, live uh, your uh, own ideas uh, for example uh, when you believe in a specific relationship when you uh, are doing a specific uh, activities that's why you are Mm, let me see how, how can i say that okay. maybe when you try to um, be original uh, about some specific um, ideas or um, a specific topic in your life with others in your company or in your uh, team or when you are uh, spending time with others uh, cultures maybe uh, is the is the way uh, how you can share something about your culture and you transmit to the other person who you are who you think and maybe who you believe in your life uh, that's why I, I was saying when you have um, a strong idea, strong way to think or strong way to to do specific things in your life, um, I think that that type of um, meanings uh, form your identity and form who you are with others. Maybe if you are a, in a multicultural a, enterprise and sharing some a, information about you and your family or your a, activities, specific activities, a, they create a specific imagine that maybe who is, who is the rest no, how is the rest of the people in the country, in El Salvador, for example? And if you transmit a ground idea about some topic, maybe uh, you are um, sharing or create a, a bad stereotype 
So uh, in the first one, the thing is that uh, when you are, I, when you feel if I identify with uh, your culture, with your um, ideas, I don't know, maybe you create a way to share with others. And that's um, very important because you are a create uh, a stereotype or idea about the rest of the people in your country. So you need to feel in the first one, um, maybe uh, get um, identity and um, then without intention, maybe you will share with others bad or good, but uh, I think that is, is the main idea. Okay, very good. Perfect, yes, actually you are right. I mean, there are many things that are meaningful for everybody and they are different because of the culture. So you will be able to share this identity with other people when you are in a multicultural environment. Very good, mm -hmm. perfect, thank you. So the rest, uh, how cultures work, that is going to be for, let's see, uh, Giselle. Check, yeah. Yes, teacher. Okay, how cultures work. So largely below the surface, cultures are a shifting dynamic set of starting points that orient us in particular ways and away from other directions. Each of us belongs to multiple cultures that give us messages about what is normal, appropriate, and expected. When others do not meet our expectations, it is often a cue that our cultural expectations are different. We may mistake difference between others and us for evidence of bad faith or lack of common sense on the part of others. Not realizing that common sense is also cultural. What is common to one group may seem strange, countering. Intuitive. What is that, teacher? Counterintuitive. Yeah, counterintuitive is like something that is not intuitive, so it's going to be the opposite of intuitive. Oh, okay. Or wrong to another. Cultural messages shape our understandings of relationships and of how to deal with the conflict and harmony that are always present whenever two or more people come together. Reading about or working across cultures is complicated, but not impossible. Here are some complications in working with cultural dimensions of conflict, conflict and the implications that flow from them. Okay, so what did you get Culture, from this part? I'm sorry. Uh, okay. No, it's okay. Um, but I understand of this, that culture, is dynamic. It's not just like, yeah, it's universal, but it's different. Uh, and it's different because just because we are human beings, it's different. You think different to me and we can share our, the same culture, but maybe you have uh, some expectations or some point of views that maybe I don't share with you, but I respect that point of view. So. I think that that's the way that culture works when maybe a, a we think different to others and others think different to us, but that doesn't mean that we cannot share um, our, our, I don't know, opinions maybe. And that's like the beauty of this thing, of this thing that Sometimes these uh, create a kind of conflict, but uh, I think that if if that conflict uh, are uh, are discussed are discussed, yeah, or, or the, of that conflict 
uh, yeah, are discussed with in, in that group of, of people that think different. Uh, maybe you realize that you can notice that maybe it the, the people or the group has a, 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 a here's the word um uh, 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 for good, um, like a, um, a, I don't know how to say this teacher. Yeah, the people think different, but maybe they, after the 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 debate, deba, I don't know debate. how to say that. Debate. debate. Thank you. The 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 differences, they. They um, maybe they realize that there are some points that have in common or has that they are they they have in common. Yeah, maybe that. Okay, perfect, very good. Thank you very much. So yes, I mean, in my hope would be the word if we are able to share everything that we know or the experiences instead of fighting each other about a movie or anything like that. So it would be a very good thing, right? So let's check the other parts. So uh, Sonia, could you please help us reading? Okay. Uh, cultural messing. Uh, uh, no, it should be ah, here. Okay. Here, okay. Okay, culture is multi layered. What you see on the surface may make difference below the surface. Therefore, cultural general generalization generalization are, genera, general excuse Ge me? yeah generalizations generalization are not the world story the whole and story the whole story and there is no substitute for building re relation relation and sharing experience coming to know others more the deeply over time culture is constantly in flux as condition Change, change, culture, change, cultural groups adapt in dynamic and sometimes unpredictable ways. Unpredictable, unpredictable ways. Uh, therefore, no compre comprehensive description can ever be formulated uh, about a particular group. Any attempt to understand a group uh, must take the dimension of time, context in the in individual difference into account. Culture is elastic, knowing the cultural norms of a given group does not predict the behavior of of a member of a that group who may not conform to norms for individual or contextual reason. Perfect. So, what did you understand on this one? Okay. Um. What do I have on this one? Uh, I think uh, different cultures. And the the people, uh, different uh, generals, um, in the distinct distinct uh, country, and uh, maybe the the acquire maybe in the country. Uh, different different persons and in different groups uh, adapt uh, 
ex exist adaptation in the in the social different cultural cultural um, the the according um, uh, your uh, are your moments in the in this case um, I think uh, it's, it's, uh, it's also a uh, change in the in the different uh, society societies very good perfect thank you interesting yeah yeah it's different in different societies different even the economies are going to cause an impact on this one Jose Osmin. Not possible. Okay, let's see. Marcus. Okay. Okay, from here. Therefore. There, okay, okay. therefore, taxonomies, example, Italian thing this way, or do this prefer that, have limited use and can lead to error if not shared with experience. Culture is largely below the surface, influencing the identities and meaning making, or who believe ourselves to be and what we care about. It's not easy to access these symbolic levels since they are largely outside our awareness. Therefore, it is important to use many ways of learning about the cultural dimension of those involved in a conflict, especially in indirect ways, including histories, metaphor, and ritual. Um, continue? Uh, yeah, please. Okay. Cultural influence and identities become important depending on context. When an aspect of cultural identity is treated or misunderstood, it may become relatively more important than other cultural identity. And this is fixed. Narrow identity may become the focus of stereotyping, negative projection, and conflict. This is a very common situation in intractable conflict. Okay, Therefore, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, what did you get from that? Okay, let me see. Okay. Um... Okay. So, um, I understand that um, sometimes we see another culture just in the survey. And for example, the topic that we we are talking about is the how to solve, how to fix some problem. And maybe um, from one culture to other culture, they have. Uh, to different, completely different perspective or, or point of view. So it's important to try to understand the, the other the other culture and not misunderstood misunderstood some concept or a stereotyping some people based on their culture. We have to get to know very well that culture in order to fix the, the conflict. Um, because sometimes we tend to do that. We just see in the surface the other people, and not to, we don't really care about the background or the, the other aspects that involve the situation. So um, it's important to, to know the other culture to solve the, the conflict. Very good. That is so true. I mean, whenever you are able to understand other cultures, other point of views, um, you will be able to manage conflicts in different ways, right? Because you understand how important is this for this other 
culture. Uh, as we say in Salvador, we don't have that many here, but uh, well, is it is a good idea for us to manage things from different points of view because we never know what is going to happen in the future, right? Okay, uh, well, we don't have more time for this. We were going to check about how to handle conflicts, maybe tomorrow if we have the time, or we're going to continue. By now, I'm going to check the attendance, my friends, because it's almost 10. And uh, let me check. The 101 for today is for Marcus. Okay. So, Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Sárguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present, teacher. Good. Sulaima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow in class and dream in English. Present teacher, I don't know why. Present teacher. I thank you, teacher. Thank you. I don't know why. I got you, don't worry. Hey, have a good okay. night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Hey, hello, Marcus. How are you? Fine. Uh, how are you? I'm very tired, but I'm very well. Happy okay, to be okay. here speaking English. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's, it's... <laughs> ah, it's very good. It's good. Know, I really enjoy. Anyways, um, eh, well, I wanted to ask you: Do you have any questions about any topic or anything that we have checked in this module or in the previous modules or any question in general in English? Mm, no, no, not really. Um, uh, I know that I have to to get more vocabulary and um, perhaps um, get more phrases uh, to in order to sound more fluent. Um, and this kind of exercise that we are doing in these um, classes, I think, is they are very helpful. Uh, for example, in, I have one, oh, today, I have a, a meeting and it's, it was a training. It was a training in English for the CSI department from, from my, company, my, my company. So um, I, feel, I felt that it was very helpful and I saw the results of these classes because I could understand almost 95% uh, of what they're speaking. And even uh, at the end, uh, the, the person who was uh, leader, leading the, the presentation, was giving the presentation, he said that he could translate something to us 
in order that we can we couldn't understand but uh, i uh, i think that for me it was not so necessary because i could understand so it's important i think i saw the resource uh, in that train because i could understand and also i feel even i feel so free to speak something but i didn't but perhaps the, the next time i i would do <laughs> but um for all i just thank you for all the the tips and the exercise i did in this uh, in these levels it's important to practice the the um, speaking because um, that's how we really learn or will be we could learn so um nothing at all to to comment just thanks for for the patient too <laughs> Because, oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, yeah, it, because sometimes I I see that some people don't answer back the, the request to to read something or to to answer something. I I know other people they arrive at home tired and they only want to sleep. But it's important to 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 take this seriously. Uh, and I, I've been trying to take it seriously because I know at the end there are only good benefits. So thanks for the patient and thanks for the all the tips. Oh, it's a pleasure, Sebastian. Yeah, uh, you have a point there. I know that some people they don't read, they don't participate. We respect. Um, that I mean, you are right. Sometimes we're tired. We we sometimes continue working at this time. Uh, it's a big effort, the one that you're doing, and I totally understand. But also, you are right because we need to take advantage, right? Because it's something that we do only once a, a day and for a specific period of time. Whenever the classes finishes, you won't be able to practice. I mean, at least not with classes. You can practice in different ways, but this is a thing that you need to take advantage. I believe that you are doing a very good job. You talk a lot. You are the ones uh, who participate the most. Almost always you participate, which is very good. You will be able to express yourself better. You, I have seen also that you have improved. I mean, since the last module and this one, uh, you have moved. You speak oh, better. Is. You have more vocabulary, pronunciation is better as well. So if you continue participating, if you continue reading, if you're participating in giving opinion, everything will be fine. And the good thing is that you know that if you have questions, of course, you can ask. It will be a pleasure to have. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, uh, I think there is uh, a good part of learning English is speaking. So I... I said the goal to participate more in this module because um, even if we commit mistake or we make any mistake, at the end we are learning, so we don't have to be so shy. Sometimes I think we have to to practice. You know? I said that goal participate more. Yeah, and I have noticed that one. To be honest with you, I'm very I'm very happy that you are speaking more. I mean, there is always time for everybody to participate, but if nobody else does, even if you repeat the participation, I mean, the one that is going to be better is you. So uh, don't worry about the other people, worry about yourself. You are doing a very good job. And if you continue with the classes and if you continue practicing in your own time with music, movies, by reading, you are going to reach a very good level. And also that was very good that you were able to understand everything, almost everything in the training. So that means that you are mm -hmm. getting to the goal, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's important because uh, the English opened many doors in, in the current market, in position or other opportunities. So um, um, I have taken seriously 
so from that <laughs> so thanks for for Oh, it's a pleasure. So remember that if you have questions, you can ask uh, in the chat in the group or uh, in the chat with me directly. And if you have questions also in the class, you can ask me and it's, it's going to be a good thing. Please continue with the platform so we can move on. And uh, well, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a good night and see you tomorrow. Okay, teacher, see you tomorrow. Thanks for a uh, good rest. It's a pleasure. Have a good night. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye. Bye.